In this video, I want to discuss tablets. Um, a tablet is basically a screen that you use to touch. And in my case, I'm only, I only have iPads. So I've got three iPads on my desk. So why do film composers use tablets? The main reason is that we don't want to have to remember hundreds of key commands. Um, a lot of times in, in our DAW, the way we work, we have key commands, and the one that we're all familiar with is Command S for save. But imagine you've got hundreds of those in your head now. Um, I can just hit one key over here to have an event happen. So if I hit my key editor, for instance, button, my key editor pops up. So that's the concept of that, or, or anything like that. That's how these, uh, how this stuff works, and why why composers use them is to not have to remember all that. The other thing would be things like. Uh, key switches. A lot of samples have key switches where you have a short note um, or some other articulation and you hit a key down here and it'll switch. In my case, I can hit staccatissimo and I got staccatissimo or back to that crescendo. That's so I don't have to remember each and every software company and each and every sample company's different key switches. I program them all myself to be something on here. Now, the reason we use it because of the ease of not having to remember everything is it's kind of like being at a kiosk. If you're at the airport or maybe at an ATM, you're just hitting various things. Um, you need to pull out money, you hit a button and it pulls out money. It's just a, a way of working that makes your, um, it keeps things very quick. You can be very fast uh, when you're writing and working to be able to quickly select things. Now, where did all this begin? Well, that's pretty simple. Um, probably about a decade ago, uh, I think it probably began with Hans Zimmer. He had hired um, Mark Weary, to, a software programmer, to program custom software. So if you've seen any photos like this one of Hans Zimmer, you can see he's got a touch screen. And that touch screen is a PC-based custom software. Uh, most of the people that you see that have worked for Hans also use that software. Now, coming around to us, there we can't use that. We need to use consumer level stuff. Around the same time as the Zimmer thing, there was another company called Jazz Mutant. And Jazz Mutant created touch screens. They were very thick. They were very expensive, about $5,000. And they also, with this Jazz Mutant uh, hardware, they created a software called Lemur. Now, Lemur is the one that I use here. Um, and it's the, that program or that software was sold to another company called Line. That's L-I-I-N-E. And Line put it out for Touch or iOS, for Mac, for iPads. They also put it out for Android. So if you can buy yourself an Android pad, tablet, you can use the same software. Other than that, um, there really wasn't a whole lot of options for us consuming or, uh, people that are not working for Hans. Basically, you had a choice between iPad or now the Android. And your software choices is Line Lemur or Touch OSC. However, there is a couple other new ones. There's one called, um, let's see, this one is called Metagrid. And Metagrid has a different kind of style. A lot of the programming is there for Cubase and, and Digital Performer and Logic. Uh, it's very cool, Pro Tools included. Um, I think it also works with like uh, uh, Final Cut Pro and a couple other things, so that's, that's very cool. However, I have gotten used to using my Lemur programmed pad and uh, this is just what I like to use, but you can use anything you want. All right, so now that we've discussed the different things there, um, I want to discuss the pros and cons of all of this stuff. Uh, there's quite a lot of it. With Lemur, for instance, you can't just program a key to send a key command. So in the key commands of Cubase, which means I can do command F, G, or whatever, whatever I program to have something happen. I can't do that with just Lemur because Lemur doesn't send key commands. It sends OSC messages or it sends MIDI messages. So what do I do? I use this program over here called OSC Ulator. And basically what happens is when I hit a button, it sends a signal to this program that that button now means Command-Shift-R, which in my case is MIDI Reset. 
So that's the negative of lemur. Lemur needs to have this to send key commands. Touch OSC does it natively. Um, I haven't done it myself, but I hear it does it. So it sends OSC messages, it sends MIDI, and it sends key commands. Very cool. Hope lemur does it in the future. So back to this. We have, um, the, so that's the, the kind of pros and cons of lemur and touch OSC. They basically are the same. It's just, I visually like this. It feels very kind of Star Trek-y to me. You know, it has this kind of, um, I don't know, 3D shape to it. Now keep in mind, all the colors, all the programming, I did myself. Okay, that's, that's the thing about Touch OSC and Lemur. You need to learn how to program yourself, and I'm not going to tell you it's easy because it's not. There's a lot of things about it. How to get a simple fader to bounce up to 100 by a click. That is a complicated little bit of business. Um, but once you get the hang of it, it's worth it. It's very well worth it. All right, so more pros and cons. The biggest situation going on with these iPads, at least, is you have to use either Wi-Fi or you have to hook up some sort of MIDI uh, iOS device. In my case, I have two, uh, or actually have three, iConnect MIDI devices. This one is on one iConnect MIDI device. This one's on that one back there. And this one isn't on either of them. And I'll tell you why in a minute. So MIDI, MIDI, this one is sending Wi-Fi. All right, cool. Um, MIDI, MIDI is just more reliable. And there are some other options. There's the Alesis iOS deck dock. It is a giant beast. And that's the one you see at a lot of the Hans Zimmer um, people, people's studios, is they'll have an iPad with an iOS dock. That's because it gives it power and sends MIDI data together at the same time. Really important to understand. All right, so my solution was the iConnectivity, um, and it also sends power and MIDI at the same time. Cool. All right, so Wi-Fi. Why did I not like Wi-Fi? All right, if you were to just put all these guys on power, and you had to send the information via Wi-Fi, Cubase, when you restart your computer, will lose all of that setup. I don't have time to reset all these pads and all the, the different ports every time I turn on my computer. That would drive me crazy. So Wi-Fi wasn't a good option for me using the Lemur Daemon. Now I do use Wi-Fi using OSC to the OSC later, which we already discussed. So Wi-Fi, no. Also in my studio, my Wi-Fi is set up on its own isolated Wi-Fi router. The Wi-Fi router um, is not connected to the rest of the house. So basically, if my wife or kid or, or whoever is upstairs watching a movie, it's not affecting any of my MIDI transfer. So it's important to set up your studio on its own Wi-Fi device. Router, I should say. All right, let's get to the biggest problem here. Power. How do you keep these things powered all day long? Just like your iPhone um, or Android phone, batteries die all the time, drives, drives us all crazy. In a studio, this stuff has to be connected all the time, 24-7. I don't want this gear to ever decharge. I don't want any of these pads to decharge. And the problem is just that. How do you keep it charged and send MIDI information? It's a trick. So um, what are the ways to power an iPad? Plug it directly into the wall, plug it directly into your computer, plug it into some MIDI device, like the iConnectivity or something like, something like that. All right, cool. So these two pads charge off the iConnectivity beautifully. Never have to think about it, just runs 100%, always charged, and it sends the MIDI. Perfect, done. This one, however, the bigger iPad Pro needs more power. And the iConnectivity MIDI 4 Plus says it can power it. It doesn't, no way. Uh, I've gone online, I've talked to their tech support, uh, it doesn't do it. So one of the USB ports of this very particular box, this MIDI device, um, one is for higher charging iPads like the iPad Pro. But I guarantee you, when I plug it in, it just drains out. And if I'm working all day long, I'll suddenly get a message saying, your iP iPad is out of power. So well, how do I solve this problem? Well, I plug it directly into the wall. This guy is charged 100% of the time because it's plugged directly into the wall, in the wall, the walls, the Apple power supply. 
Not into my computer, because it, does, again, doesn't get enough power. And not into the eye connectivity, because, again, doesn't get enough power. So what's the other negative? Well, even though it's plugged into the wall, when I'm running lemur after about four or five hours, it still loses charge. I don't know. That's a mystery to me. But at least it's a lot less. I can run and I can work in my studio for 8, 10, 12 hours, 24 hours, and pretty much all these iPads will stay charged. So let's go over the pros and cons again. First, pros and con. Power. How do you keep it powered and send MIDI information? Well, I use a combination of the wall and iConnectivity MIDI 4 Plus. MIDI information. How do you send your MIDI information? Well, in my case, it is going from this iPad into the eye connectivity, which is turning it into the MIDI information, and then connected to the computer. This one, however, sends over Wi-Fi. And that Wi-Fi goes out this pad into OC to OSCU later, and OSCU later turns that information into the key command I need for my DAW. So, Wi-Fi for that. Hardwired for those. Um, what other pros and cons? The other pros and cons would be software programming. Uh, Line Lemur and Touch OSC are a bit difficult. Uh, Metagrid is already programmed for you. So that's a con, or pro, and the other two have a little more of a con. But it's well worth it to learn how to program your own, because then you get exactly how you want it, what you want, everything. I mean, it's, it's just such a beautiful thing to have that. Um, and, you know, when it comes to the DAW connection, there really is no other way for you to select all, like, let's say you select two bars of 16th notes, and you need to select the third note of every 16th bar. In Cubase, I can hit one button and do select. Boom. And it's going to select them all. And then I can adjust the volume or the velocity. Can't do that in any other program, and that's really cool. So, um... The main, uh, main pro for this stuff is to be able to quickly call up key commands and call up certain screens with a touch of a button. I need to see the audio pool in Cubase. I hit a button called pool, and there it is. I don't have to remember, what's that? Command, shift, P. I mean, there's hundreds of them, and there's no way, any program has hundreds of these key commands. There's no way you're gonna remember them all. But it's the fastest way to be efficient in, in working in a DAW. Okay, and I think that's where I'm going to end this video. Um, there are lots of pros and cons to uh, tablets and iPads and these kind of things. I personally find them very, very helpful. So, and I hope this video was helpful to you.